Hello, Wakazoo friends. I'm going to read you one of my very, very favorite stories today. It's a, a book uh, called Everybody Needs a Rock. This book is by Bird Baylor, and the pictures are by Peter Parnell, one of my favorite authors and illustrators. Everybody needs a rock. I'm sorry for kids who don't have a rock for a friend. I'm sorry for kids who only have tricycles, bicycles, horses, elephants, goldfish, three-room playhouses, fire engines, wind-up dragons, and things like that if they don't have a rock for a friend. I want you to keep your eye out as we read this story because there are lots of really cool hidden images in this book. That's why I'm giving them my 10 rules for finding a rock. Not just any rock. I mean a special rock that you find yourself and keep as long as you can, maybe forever. If somebody says, what's so special about a rock? Don't even tell them. I don't. Nobody is supposed to know what's special about another person's rock. All right. Here are the rules. Rule number one, if you can go to a mountain made out of nothing but a hundred million small, shiny, beautiful, roundish rocks. But if you can't, any place will do. Even an alley, even a sandy road. Rule number two, when you are looking at rocks, don't let mothers or fathers or sisters or brothers or even best friends talk to you. You should choose a rock when everything is quiet. Don't let dogs bark at you or bees buzz at you. But if they do, don't worry. The worst thing you can do is go rock hunting when you are worried. Can't turn the page here. Rule number three. Bend over more, even more. You have to sit on the ground with your head almost touching the earth. You have to look a rock right in the eye. Otherwise, don't blame me if you can't find a good one. Rule number four, don't get a rock that is too big. You'll be sorry. It won't fit, fit your hand right and it won't fit in your pocket. A rock as big as an apple is too big. A rock as big as a horse is much too big. Rule number five, 
Don't choose a rock that is too small. It will only be easy to lose or, or a mouse might eat it thinking that it's a seed. Believe me, that happened to a boy in the state of Arizona. Rule number six, the size must be perfect. It has to feel easy in your hand when you close your fingers over it. It has to feel jumpy in your pocket when you run. Some people touch a rock a thousand times a day. There aren't many things that feel as good as a rock if the rock is perfect. Rule number seven, look for the perfect color. That could be a sort of pinkish gray with bits of silvery shine in it. Some rocks that look brown are really other colors, but you only see them when you squint and when the sun is right. Another way to see colors is to dip your rock in a clear mountain stream, if one is passing by. Rule number eight. The shape of the rock is up to you. There is a girl in Alaska who only likes flat rocks. Don't ask me why. I like them lumpy. The thing to remember about shapes is this. Any rock looks good with a hundred other rocks around it on a hill. But if your rock is going to be special, it should look good by itself in the bathtub. Rule number nine, always sniff a rock. Rocks have their own smells. Some kids can tell by sniffing whether a rock came from the middle of the earth or from an ocean or from a mountain where wind and sun touched it every day for a million years. You'll find out that grown-ups can't tell these things. Too bad for them. They just can't smell as well as kids can. Rule number 10. Don't ask anybody to help you choose. I've seen a lizard pick one rock out of a desert full of rocks and go sit there alone. I've seen a snail pass up 20 rocks and spend all day getting to the one it wanted. You may have to make up your own mind. You'll know.
All right. That's 10 rules. If you think of any more, write them down yourself. I'm going out to play a game that takes just, that takes just me and one rock to play. I happen to have a rock right here in my hand. Now, I do have a rock. This is a very flat rock. You can see here it's super flat, it's pretty smooth. This is a great pocket rock. And matter of fact, I've had lots of rocks before uh, that are similar to this. And what I like about a rock like this is that you can rub it whenever you want. You can put it in your pocket and you can rub it for good luck. And the cool thing is, is that the oil on your hands will make it even shinier and even smoother. But again, you have to pick your rock. And when you find it, you'll know that you picked a good one. So when you get a chance, go for a hike or a walk, get outside, get down low, just like Bird Baylor said in the book, and see if you can find a special rock, your rock. Have fun.